Are you switched on? Yeah. Have you got a buttery on the thing? <laughs> right, here we go. J just another day in paradise. So, um, you've seen before we were working on the 500 Max Norton 56. Uh, better used to race. Few races in Holland and that Monster 100, etc. Um, sorted out the front end, um, put that screen on, which is quite a nice job. Um, <coughs> we've been really double checking it, it was really built very quickly, obviously not a lot of care putting in it, so <coughs> we've sorted out the brakes, uh, the gearbox wasn't selecting, so we've got the gears all selecting nicely. Um, we've got some new unions for the uh, oiling system. Um, these were all missing, so we've got um, the nuts and the ferrules to make up the new pipes. So we'll make up the new pipes to go on here and then um, get it oiled up, you know, uh, and then fire it up. Um, <coughs> generally speaking, a very genuine bike, so um, look forward to cracking it up and hearing it running. So we spoke about the ambassador the last time you were doing this, so we've got quite a bit of progress on the ambassador. Steve's pulled it apart. I've sent off a lot of stuff for chroming. What we're doing is just a, a, a good uh, sort out and um, fettle, but it, it, it could do with a real strip down, but really we've got too much on, so what we're doing We've aqua blasted off the head, get that all sharpened up. It's done a few miles, so um, we'll paint the barrel. The aluminium case, we've sent that off to get it refurbished, it's all damaged. The do Villiers do new ones, but they're not the same as the original, so we're having the original sorted out. Same engine as the SHS, you remember Semi's first SH trials bike, so same motor. 80, 3 speed, 197. Come around this side. Um, again, we're doing some jobs. We're going to drop this off. That's the, we'll have that all polished up. Uh, see the clutch, um, five spring, no cush drive on that. So the primary chain, a lot of slack on that, but good enough. So we'll have the barrel nicely painted. We'll drop the wheels out. Uh, need to put a new tube in the back because it's flat, so um, I say to people, to get on the British team for the International Six Day, you had to put a, be able to change a tube in four minutes. If you couldn't do a tube change in four minutes, you weren't on the British team. Miller was on the British team, but again, the wheels that we had on our aerials and triumphs were QD, so um, you could get the wheel out, QD, spindle, pull it out, on the deck, tube out, new tube in, back in again and you had to be going within four minutes so um, we had to train very hard to get up to that standard but uh, Miller was lucky enough he did it so um, but a lot of people didn't so they never got on the British team so T1 60s coming on um, got this far engine in uh, exhaust on um, a lot of stuff uh, We'll have to find a new primary chain, which is proving difficult because they're a one-off chain size. So we've got to do a bit more search to find that. Uh, otherwise, coming along okay. Um, this side um, got the bank of carburetors to go on. Um, that's your bank of carburetors. So um, need to check all that out. Pop them on here and uh, hey gusto this is the electric start to go on um, so the Boyer branch ignition system to be fitted and uh, we've had all the chrome done as you know so that's all looking pretty ship shape um, and the petrol tanks up in the top over here so um, seats all ready so um, we sorted out all the discs and calipers and stuff, so um, shaping up quite well. So then we move on to um, the other project which we're working on, um, the rally. Remember we 
we took the rally apart um, so we've been gathering up some bits the the nickel stuff's just all come back yesterday so that's all nicely plated we've got to paint this section here black and um, handlebars have all come up quite nicely all the pipes kick starts if you look down in there so um, I hope you remember where all that lot went to because you've got to put it together um, we've just had some, a delivery this morning from the rally club we needed um, the alloy silencer which is quite unique and uh, that's just arrived with rally on the side so um, it gives it a bit of uh, genuine sort of that was a genuine rally feature an alloy silencer and with the weight of an alloy silencer they had quite a deadening effect on the noise um, knee pads rubber knee pads for the tank um, which pop on the side um, so I'll just grab the tank and show you the tank one moment so we've got the tank back um, those are that's your oil pump here that's your oil pump and your filler caps and of course um, you got the your knee pads which will go on here rally on the side and nice feature so that goes on there so uh, shaping up nice to have rally and genuine knee pads it just gives it that uh, nice touch also we we're very lucky that was missing the gear change and we had one in the store and it's always great if you can get the manufacturer's name on the pot Sturmy Archer uh, gearbox so that's the selector for it this pops through here you see and that's how you get your gear changed that pivots on there so you get first neutral second third three speed box so then we have a look at the engine um, over here um, you remember we got this far so we'll start proceeding to pull this apart let you have a look inside right so we'll have the barrel and head off well it's one lump actually um, we should maybe show you how to do this first you've got a couple of chipped um, fins here so you, what you do there you see you cut that's in cardboard or paper you see you cut it like that right but then there's another secret you do I shouldn't really tell you but I'll show you anyway you get a sticky labor label like that you see and then you put your template on there this is the easy way to do it I always remember when I worked at aerials and you just have to make stuff in the in the development shop and you got all these big blueprint plans and of course in the early days you used to have to mark the steel blow it and then meticulously mark it and scribe it but the quickest way was just to cut the bit out of the drawing stick it on a bit of on the metal and cut it out and you knew it was perfect so I just get a bit of metal for it to put this on so you got that there so that's so then you just stick that on there like that stick it on like that and then you've got the shape you need so then you just cut it out on the hacksaw and then you end up with that and you just cut that out of there then, then you end up with that so yeah you just put that on there it's best to make it in mild steel because mild steel flex has got um, movement in it it's it, it's not like a cast where it's rigid the softer the metal you can get the more pliable it is so when you weld it the metal gives and it takes the stress out of the job so we've got two fins to make up um, so that's number one so you'll mark number one number one on here and it's best to do that so when you're welding it you know that's the front that's the position we'll make that on later so put that in the box there so we don't want to lose that lot 
Uh, so then we'll <clears throat> have the barrel off and um, you remember we spoke about the air cooler, the air cooled nut on the top of the exhaust valve that cools off the hot uh, exhaust valve so that needs to be dressed up You've got a bit of uh, that needs a bit of TLC some it's been a bit uh, butchered up so I'll dress that up so then we have the nuts off the barrel there we go so four of them so theoretically we just should ease that off um, There we go, that's the barrel. Bore looks in reasonable sort of condition. Actually in very good condition. Bit disappointed in the design. Um, light barrel flanges are not a good idea because um, there's a lot of stress on that flange and it breaks off. It's the, really the end of the world. So lots of better engines have twice the, twice the base on the flange like the new imperial which is heavy so now we just drop the piston off you do notice on the piston there's no circ clips in this piston most pistons have a, a little groove around there and you put a circ clip in these have just got buffer pads on the end of the gudgeon pin which um, again similar to the new imperial so the aluminium although it scuffs the side of the barrel it doesn't uh, damage it so um, there you go we've got to look at that I'm not too happy with the ring movement there we may have to um, get down and uh, get to the club and see if we've got a new set of rings so uh, have a look at that so then we off we go so we just hold it like that so we can get these nuts out without too much drama So, theoretically, and that's quite nice here, if you have a look on this side, um, where you've got the engine number, and semi-sports, which is quite nice, SS, semi-sports motor. So, um, these are the followers, they come out. Paint, touch of red for exhaust. We'll pop them in that box there, along with the nuts. And... Um, Hey Gusto, that should come apart without too much um, aggro. We'll just give it a touch with a mallet. So that should theoretically come off there like that. So here we go, we're inside. Um, looks in relatively good condition. I'll have to drop the half time pinion off because it won't clear the cases. The um, half time pinion loosened off we've got to see about the markings on it because uh, push it I don't want to lose the markings so I think there's only one key on it um, groove but we'll just stick a bit of red paint on it anyway so that's the that goes on there and that's the um, key position so that comes off there and there's only one key position so you can't lose the timing put that there and then we'll have the flywheel out like that that's the spacer that goes on there so you've got to remember that we'll push that back on again so big end feels in relatively good condition um, I think somebody's been in there quite recently because that's a brand new nut so bad set of flywheels generally best flywheels are full flyways I don't know why they've just got like bob weights on the flywheels so um, back to the drawing board I think so then we look at the crankcases um, there we go that's the main bearing that feels a bit carroty so we'll have that out and put a new set of mains in it because when you've got it done this far um, it's really false economy to try and suffer those old bearings, you know. So, 
This is the gearbox. Your Sturmy Archer uh, gearbox. Pop that out of the way to keep it safe. So, Sturmy Archer box. Um, we'll have the end plate off here. Just a little gentle tap with a soft mallet. And there we go. So we're, we're getting into the gearbox. Right, we've managed to ease this outer case off. Um, don't know if we can salvage the gasket because there's no point in going down to Halfords. We'll have to make it if it's damaged. So, right, we're in the gearbox. That's the kickstart job. That's the kickstart quadrant. That's your ratchet. All in resin. That's a bit of wear on there, but relatively good. These gears here, that looks in excellent condition. So, pull all the gears out like that. Don't worry about where they go because you know where you, where you are with them. That's a, an important um, bit to remember that that goes on in there like that. So I might take a photograph of that myself just to make sure that it all goes back together. Final drive, not off to get the sleeve gear out. Then you've got your six gears. And as Miller told you before, other gearboxes, um, the shafts have obviously grown parallel, so all the teeth must match up parallel. So if, it, if, if you get <coughs> the lay shaft and the main shaft off crook, you know you've got the gears in the wrong place. So anyway, we'll stick this in here and see what we can do. This is a little tool that's very handy um, where you can lock, hold the sprocket like that. This is left hand thread. Obviously the drive is one way so you don't want the drive the same way as the nut comes off so you put it left hand thread so that when the sprocket goes it's actually tightening the nut rather than loosening it. So there you go, wrong way. So we'll drop that off and uh, good condition. So, so and the sprocket should come off quite handy. There you go. Little felt on the back of the um, sleeve gear. That's to keep the oil in the gearbox. So we'll put that in and that should come out quite handy like that. So um, sleeve gear is coming out here and your race. You see the ball bearing race either side like that. So um, that's all shimmed up, so that'll all need to be kept very much like that. So, um, and then that will pop on here. So there's your gear cluster together like that. This is your selector mechanism in here. You see when you move that lever like that, that shifts your selector along the shafts to get first, second and third and neutral. So. There you go, um, that'll all be aqua blasted off, all cleaned up nice and tidy. A lot to do, these are some bits going off. Uh, that's for polish, uh, this is for aqua blast, that's your timing chest. Uh, your gear selector uh, mount, um, that goes under the petrol tank, so you, your, your gear lever pivots on the top here, and then your oil cooler you're gonna we're gonna dress all that off get it aqua blasted and um, sharpen it up a bit so there we go